Coming up on SPCA Rescue. Two dogs in terrible conditions shock animal welfare officers. Very, very thin, bordering emaciation. A kitten stuck for 24 hours down a drain is fading fast. I'm really hoping that this is going to be a happy outcome. And an inspector tries to help a hoarder. I'm feeding about 25. Whose house has been taken over by animals. Oh no. Okay, thanks, Bev. I'll go and take a look. Uh, we just received a call regarding um, a couple of skinny dogs on a property in Otara. A uh, dog controller there at the property now, and they're concerned with the conditions of the dogs. So we'll go and take a look. Hey, guys. The animal control officers came across the dogs while investigating a barking complaint. Oh, okay. Very, very thin, bordering emaciation. And it's clear why these dogs are distressed. Hello, boy. Hello. This chap's not looking too well either. Yeah, that'll be quite tight around the neck. Possibly even cutting in, actually. It's all right. It's all right. The dogs have no water, and their living area is filthy and infested with flies. Um, I'm going to uh, remove both the dogs. We've got um, this one's got all sorts going on. You can see that chain's twisting up tighter and tighter and tighter around the neck. Every time the dog turns around, the chain gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And eventually, if it's not um, set free, it actually strangles the dog and kills it. And the other one here, that's very, very skinny, bordering emaciation. So I'll get them both checked out uh, by the vets. With nobody home at the property, Kevin plans to return later to find the person responsible for these dogs. Come on, girl. But just as he removes the dogs, someone arrives home. Uh, the owner's just arrived, so I'm just going to go and um, check it out. In Manurewa, the SPCA has been called to clear an unusual blockage in a stormwater pipe. I got a call out last night to attend um, um, kitten in the cesspit. Located the cat in the pipe, but unfortunately I, I couldn't get out. Um, and then this morning I came back, uh, located the manhole. Uh, determined it was in the short section of pipe, and then I gave you guys a call, and then thank you very much for your call. A kitten has somehow got itself stuck 10 feet underground in a 12-inch pipe. So basically, this cat is right up about 20 feet in. I'm going to flick a stone up there and see if I can get something to stir. No one has claimed the kitten, which has now been in the wet drain at least 24 hours, and Field Officer Brooke Kelly is concerned it may not have survived. Okay, did you hear that? We've got life down there, so the kitten's still alive. It's alive, but it's it's not too good. There are no specialist tools for this sort of rescue, so Brooke's using some Kiwi ingenuity. If I tape this food bowl onto here like so, it's going to give me something solid to push the cat through. I've got Andre waiting at the other end here. He's going to wait with the net, and hopefully what's going to happen is I'm going to get back down in, in there push this hose through, push the cat out, and we'll have a happy ending. Fingers crossed. Brooke's unsure how successful this bowl on a hose device will be, but he has no other way to budge the kitten. Right, down into the dungeons I go. The SPCA is responding to a complaint from neighbours of a man with too many cats. The report is he's got 20 to 30 cats on his property. Who are going to call in now and see what the condition of the animals are, and if there are that many cats, see if I can offer some help in a desection return. The neighbours claim these wild cats are causing havoc on their properties. Hello. Morning, I'm Derek from the SPCA. We've had a phone call of concern that you might have too many cats and you're not coping with them very well. I've got too many cats all right and I'm not really coping that well at the present how, time. How many have you got, sir? I'm feeding about 25. They will scatter when anyone comes. Derek's priority is to make sure this colony doesn't get any bigger. What I'd like to do is desex some of the cats, if not all of them. Ah, uh, yes. And you'd certainly be interested in that, would you? Oh, yes, I would. Inside Larry's house, it's clear that he's struggling to cope. The cats are taking over. 
I, I like cats, as you most probably guessed. I do like them, and especially when they're kitten, they get a bit gooey-eyed over them, you know. He, he's obviously a man who loves his animals, he's caring for them. He seems receptive to what I'm talking about, but he's a typical hoarder. Uh, but we're here to try and help him and hopefully help the neighbours as well. Catching and desexing up to 30 wild cats is a huge job. Now that's my oldest cat, completely mad. Derek's first target is Junior, one of Larry's indoor cats. And if Junior is anything to go by, Derek has his work cut out. Oh no. In Ultra, the owner of two skinny dogs is upset the SPCA has intervened. You got what you want to go. Okay. But Kevin has some questions. Come, come talk to me. Why are you coming here and take your dogs for? Because they need treatment. You already treatment. put them in the van. Yeah, they need And treatment. while Animal Too Control listens in, he tries to convince her to surrender her dogs, one of which is in a very bad way. When I first walked, looked over the fence, there was no movement out the dog. I thought that the dog was actually dead. That dog wouldn't live much longer the way it was. No water, very emaciated. I mean, like you said, it can, I think it hardly stand up. Fortunately, Kevin's negotiations pay off. I've spoke to the owner at, at length. who was, uh, you know, very upset in that and had the dogs for a while, but has come to the realisation that she cannot give the dogs what they need. She's admitted the dogs have been living on scraps. So either yeah, coming with me, we'll get them checked out and um, see how they get on. The two SPCA officers are feeding a hose through the drain to try and push out the stuck kitten. So far, so good, it's pushing down. We've just got to hope that it makes connection with this cat and moves it forward about three quarters of the way to the cat. The kitten has been down the drain at least 24 hours, and it seems to have stopped moving. I thought it was close to this hole, but um, it's gone quiet now. To make matters worse, Brooks' makeshift rescue device has hit a snag. I'm just looking for anything that could be used like a piece of wire that I could strap to the hose just to make it a little bit more stable. With nothing suitable on board, he turns to a neighbour for help. May I have these two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that OK? Yeah. With no sounds coming from the drain, it's a race against time to get the kitten out. It's just taping the wire to the hose. What it does is it strengthens up this hose a little bit for me and hopefully it's going to allow me to just push this down into the hole a little bit further. We only need another maybe eight feet. Weird and wonderful ways to save animals. How are you feeling about your little invention there, Brooke? Mildly confident. Yeah. Back down to the dungeons I go. However, it may already be too late. I think I'm about up to the cat, which isn't a good sign because I don't have any movement. Nothing happening? No. Nah. At Larry's house, Derek has netted Junior, the oldest member of the colony. But Larry insists this cat has been desexed. He has been done. Who did him? The vets. You had well, it seems with the wild ones, all the vets clip the air. No, uh, but I guarantee you he's done. There is only one way to find out for sure. He's been done, you're right. Oh uh, yeah, I knew he'd been done. There are about 30 cats to be checked and desexed, but after the tussle with Junior, Derek rolls out plan B. We're going to have to have a policy of having a trap here for you yeah. and leaving you a few cages so that as and when you can get hold of them, you can put them in the cages and then we'll take them away and have them desexed. Derek is relying on Larry to set traps. I'll make you my first point of call every morning and if you've left a cat out the front of your porch, I'll take it away and bring it back in the afternoon and we'll do it on a daily basis. It's, it's nice that you're working with me, Larry. And, uh, have you here, mate. With so many cats dispersed, I haven't been really able to assess whether or not they're um, sick or injured yet. The ones I've seen are fine, but I've got to keep coming back now and see the rest of them. And over a period of weeks, hopefully we'll have all 20, 25 of them desexed and they won't breed. There won't be an explosion of cats. I'm really hoping that this is going to be a happy outcome. After two hours of failed rescue attempts, SPCA officers are concerned by the lack of movement coming from the kitten in the drain. I think I just had a movement of an ear. So the kitten's now looking at me, so it's very lethargic. The kitten seems to be fading fast, so Brooke and Andre have to come up with another plan quickly. You want to pull this hose up? Yep. But as Andre pulls the hose, events take an unexpected turn. All right, slow down. Yep. He's following it. Oh, that's good. Come 
on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Bingo! Well done. Oh, man. Awesome. And so here we have one little kitten stuck down a drain. The kitten is about three weeks old. It's dangerously cold and Brooke fears for its life. This little guy, as you can see that he's very cold and very lethargic, I'm just gonna actually wrap him up and put him down my top. Body heat is uh, the best form of warming that we can get for this kitten right now. Time is now critical if this kitten is to have any chance of survival. I know this looks rather funny, but he's gonna go down my top. And hopefully, <laughs> we sit the little face up here like this. Like that, and we'll keep them warm all the way back to base. The surrendered dogs are settling into their temporary home at the SPCA, but it will be a long road to recovery, especially for the Border Collie, staff have named Seeker. This is Seeker. She does have a little bit of um, conjunctivitis in her eyes. Oh, there's a little bit of mate, but they're not particularly red or swollen. Oh, she's got pressure sores on her elbows and she looks like she's had puppies at some stage. These are old though, they're not going to be a problem. She's definitely significantly underweight, but as long as she hasn't got any inherent internal problems, she, she should put that weight back on fairly quickly. Are you feeding her what, two or three, you're going to feed her two or three times a day? Three times. Yeah. While Sika is seriously underweight, Peter can see no reason why her physical condition would prevent her being rehomed in the future. For older dogs, there are, you know, there are potential problems, but her colour, everything about her looks normal. So I suspect she's just underweight because she just hasn't been fed enough. Right there. Alright, sweetie, let's come put some weight on you. Derek is returning to Larry's house to see if he's been able to trap any of his wild cats. Have we got one in this one? We've got one in there. Oh, he's a biggie. Oh, is he a, a boy? He's a boy. He's a beauty. He's the father of most probably half the cats around the place. This cat, known as Big Daddy, is one of Larry's favourites. He's a beautiful cat. He used to be able to cuddle up with him. When he's neutered, he'll calm down a little bit and his roaming days yeah, will slowly come down, so hopefully he'll be, become more of a homely cat rather than a stranger that uh, just strolls around everybody's gardens. Desexing Big Daddy should make a big impact on Larry's exploding cat population. When all the kittens started coming along, I could do good person, I got all the females done, but I didn't get the males done. And what would happen with the cats like this, they'd bring home all their little girlfriends. And their little girlfriends liked it here, and I fed them, and the next thing you know, there's another litter. And by that stage, I, I couldn't afford to get even the females done. All going well, Big Daddy will be back with Larry within 24 hours. Yes, I know, it's all a bit exciting, isn't it, eh? The kitten rescued from the stormwater drain has been rushed to the SPCA hospital. Hey Peter, how are you? Thanks. Well, this little guy's been uh, stuck down the drain. and has been down there since sometime last night. Very, very cold, very lethargic, but still a bit of life left. Was it wet? Was there water in there? Yeah, there was uh, water in there, Peter. Um, he was lying face first in it. It's perked up a lot since um, I first had contact with her this morning. Yeah. Um, in fact, there was about an hour there where she didn't make a sound at all. She's pretty bony even before he got in there by the feel of it. Mm. Peter is not confident the kitten will survive, but he will do all he can to increase its chances. Thanks, Peter. Not a problem. The little girl is only three weeks old and should be feeding off her mother. She may not be ready to eat solids. So we've got her cage on a heated pad, which will get body temperature up fairly quickly. She's definitely thinking about eating, so... Um, she's actually even just started to lick a little bit of this already. Even once I put it on the lips, she started to lick it and then by putting the bowl up. So she's obviously interested in food, which is good news. Um, and then it's just a case of just wait and see. Um, obviously she's very small. She's obviously been without food and got pretty cold, so she's not out of the woods yet. But it's a good start and we'll just see how we go from there. The next 24 hours will be critical. How are you this morning? Against the odds, the kitten rescued from the drain has made it through the night. There are a number of things uh, that were going against this little cat. A, the amount of time that it had spent down in the drain, the fact that she was so cold and so wet, the fact that she was so young, 
So all these things coupled together, we really didn't expect her to survive. So this is a miracle. But Brooke knows she's not in the clear yet. There still are a lot of concerns for her, health-wise. She's got to almost triple in her body weight before she can go out to foster. Uh, there's going to be a lot of TLC that's required to get her up to that, but the fact that she is here 24 hours later is definitely a miracle. Derek is delivering Big Daddy to the SPCA hospital. He's a biggie. He's semi-wild, this one. He's friendly to the owner, but he yeah. does try to escape. OK. You just leave him there, we'll look after him. Thank you very before. much. See you later. No problem. Because Big Daddy is a colony cat, Peter may uncover any number of contagious diseases. 30% of them will have feline AIDS, or the, you know, FIV, so we do have a bit of a look over them to make sure there's nothing dramatic and check for cat flu, ringworm and things like that. So we give them a bit of a look over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip this cage up gently and so he goes down to the bottom. Because he is wild, it is also unlikely this cat has had any vet treatment before. But the main thing at the moment is to get him asleep without anyone getting hurt. What we do now is we just just gently lower this down on top of them so they can't attack us and we just inject them intramuscularly. And then we just let him go, let him back down. and So in five minutes we'll check him and he should be asleep and then once we've got him out and can handle him, we'll then check his general health, give him a once over. There has been a reversal of fortunes for the two surrendered dogs. While Seeker, who is the thinner of the two, is putting on weight, the boy has had a serious setback. He's a real sweetheart. He's just, um, we found out this morning that he's not good with other dogs. He's, you know, he's a 10-year-old entire male that's obviously had no socialisation. Because the dog is aggressive, he cannot be rehomed. We can't expect a member of the public to take on a dog with such a huge issue. He's obviously just been chucked out in the backyard, chained up and left there, and this is the result of what happens when you do that. Hopefully with his friend that he came in with, the outcome will be a lot better. But after suffering terrible neglect, can Seeker pass the temperament test that her kennel mate failed? Radio. Big Daddy's lights are out, so Peter is checking him for any signs of serious disease common in colony cats. The problem with these cats, because if they're wild, the people can't treat them. It's unfair to release a cat in an unhealthy state because it's just going to slowly die. He's got no conjunctivitis, nasal discharge, his feet and everything look good. And he's actually in quite good shape, so... It's good news for Big Daddy. So Peter goes ahead with the desexing operation. Desexing them is really important. These ones are obviously somewhere where someone's looking after them. So if we desex them, then they're not going to go and beat up the neighbour's cat and, you know, get into their house and go through their cat door and pee on their carpets and generally make a nuisance of themselves. Desexing Big Daddy will also have a calming effect on Larry's favourite cat. Seeker! We're just in the middle of doing a behavioural assessment on Seeker. Um, this is just to find out basically how dominant she is, how responsive she is to people and whether she is safe to be rehomed. Looking, looking away, eyes soft, ears back, tail's neutral. What was that? Did you You're not phased? No. Basically, Seeker didn't freak out majorly or anything. She heard it, which also shows us that her hearing is fine. Um, but she didn't freak out, and she just looked at it and wanted to go and investigate what it was. For a dog found near starving in filthy conditions, Seeker is remarkably well adjusted. So basically Seeker has passed her temperament assessment. She did very well and we're very happy with the way she's progressed here. So now the next stage is to put her up for adoption and find the perfect home for her. Derek is returning Big Daddy to Larry's house. Uh, there we go, Big Daddy. Safely home. The desexing operation already seems to have had a calming effect on the colony tomcat. He's uh, relaxed and quite calm. Getting Big Daddy fixed is the first step in controlling a colony of about 30 cats living at the property. Are you there, Larry? Larry is due home soon and will be relieved to see his favourite cat back safe and sound. He's an indoor cat, so Larry, when he gets home, will let him out. But we'll wrap him up all nice and warm. And waiting on the porch are the next patients. Oh, look. Two little kittens, children of uh, Big Daddy. 
possibly. Health-wise, their eyes are bright, they're alert, their coats are nice and glossy, they look generally healthy. When you get a large colony like this, you've only got to get one that gets sick uh, and it spreads through the lot of them. So it's important to get them neutered and keep the population down as much as we can. Derek is in for the long haul to keep this cat colony healthy and manageable. This is our little miracle kitten that I've nicknamed Storm. Didn't really expect Storm to make it. Two weeks after her rescue, the kitten has doubled her body weight. She should have still been feeding on her mother at the time. Uh, the fact that she started to eat by herself almost immediately when she came in was a really good sign. Brooke has become quite attached to this little battler. I spent three hours down in a confined space trying to rescue a cat that I honestly thought wouldn't survive. So to see her now in this state uh, really warms my heart and it's something that in this sort of job that we, uh, we take and cherish these moments as much as we can. There is no doubt that Storm has a sunny future. And I think uh, this cat is just going to be the most loving cat you could imagine. I find that pound animals or anything that comes from a shelter really knows the meaning of life. After a month of care and regular meals, Seeker has been adopted. And after being cooped up and neglected, she is enjoying her newfound freedom. So she's a really chilled out dog and she's awesome with the kids. She's very gentle. Good girl, She's also lapping up the attention. Well, we saw her at the SPCA and we thought she looked like a beautiful dog. She's got a lovely little gentle face. And then we heard about where she'd come from and the fact that she was so hungry she could almost not stand up. And we thought, considering she's had a bit of a rough life, she's a beautiful character. Despite being badly treated, Sika is still a devoted pet. She's an old girl, but we figured that if we can give her a couple of nice years, that that would be a very nice thing to do.